right. Well, welcome back, everyone, to another exciting podcast um, with your superintendent, Dr. Terrell Yarbrough, um, to Talk 122. Um, man, it's been, a, it's been a while since we recorded an episode, so I'm, I'm really excited um, to have our special guest here. Um, so if you would be so kind to introduce yourself to the audience, and then we'll, we'll get started. Absolutely. Yeah. My name is Allie. Um, I am a recruiting specialist at Rock Valley Credit Union. I work hand in hand with our um, community engagement specialist as well, just looking to get out in the community and do great things. Okay. So mm-hmm. Rock Valley Credit Union. Okay, yes. So, so tell us a little bit about just your path, you know, like as far as oh, wanting to, to, to do what you do. Yeah. So I went to high school in Belvedere. Belvedere High School. Okay. Graduated in 2014. I did yearbook um, designing, page editing, and stuff like that. Okay. And that was really something that I got into as I got older. And I realized that I really wanted to pursue it after high school. Um, okay. From there, I went to Columbia College in downtown Chicago, got mm-hmm. a communications degree, came back home, and found a job, you know, that post-grad okay. hunt for a job kind of thing. And this popped up perfectly. It's near home. I'm next to my parents, which is very important to me. Right. And um, I'll be, I believe it's three years in okay. July that I've been at Rock Valley Credit Union. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So mm-hmm. when you, when you, thank you for all of that. So yeah. we won't hold it against you that yeah. you, you know, Belvedere, Belvedere <laughs> you know, not, not Harlem, but, but you know, that's, that's okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you think of um, financial literacy, yes. right. And, and the importance of that. Um, think back to your time, you know, at Belvedere as a student, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then obviously, you know, your time as a college student and now working at Rock Valley. Um, what things have you learned along the way that you think that, you know, students, you know, high school students in particular need to know about just financial literacy? Oh, man, there's a lot. I mean, um, Anna, who is our community engagement director, she her and I really have a lot of conversations about what we learned growing up as opposed to all of the the internet and the access that the younger kids have nowadays. When I was younger, I did get some of that education part, but it wasn't to a point where I felt a thousand percent comfortable to apply for the FAFSA, apply for student loans and things of that sort. So, I mean, growing up first generation college student, it Mm -hmm. makes it double difficult because you're, you're pretty much going in a blind. Um, and you have your parents that are wanting to support you and do mm-hmm. all of those things and be able to guide you, but they can't really, they don't have the resources for gotcha. that, especially because they didn't, they didn't have the opportunity to further their education and stuff like that. So you mm-hmm. go in it blind and then post-grad, you have all these student loans and things like that, that mm-hmm. I wish I would have known and had more education about when I was growing up. And I applied for all those loans, not knowing there's direct loans, there's yes. private loans and all yeah. of that stuff, and then paying it afterwards and you want to get a head start on that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. then the time that you have that you don't you don't necessarily have to make payments, but it's smarter to get ahead of the game as opposed to waiting it out. Um, and then, I mean, starting at Rock Valley Credit Union, not only do we help out the community with those financial education topics, but it's very much pushed internally as well. Okay. They want staff to be able to you know, have that knowledge so that way we can use it in our own personal lives and then be able to translate that to our members mm-hmm. in our communities, like the Harlem High Schools and you guys' school district. Like we we come in here and try and to not educate because you guys are already doing those things, but enhance it. Okay. So we can provide those products and resources like Bonsai, um, which is a free platform that some of the Harlem school district teachers are utilizing to really, you know, provide an alternative whether it's like games, worksheets, workbooks, and stuff like that. So it's real life situations that are helpful for when they start applying for college or okay. trade schools and stuff like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm glad you, you mentioned like FASA mm-hmm. and all those things that um, my son, he'll, his name is Kobe. <laughs> okay. Um, and he'll be 22 and he came home oh. this weekend and, you know, I'm all excited and like, oh, he's coming home. Well, he came home so we can fill out his FASA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm yep. like, oh, okay. You know, and that, and those are some of the things that, that I feel that, um, you know, because, you know, we went to college, we're able to help him with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but being able to have that knowledge is, is so critical, and, and especially at a young age. So I wish I would have taught him just a little bit sooner how, how to do it by well, himself. It's, it's a learning <laughs> yeah. experience, honestly. And then from that point on, I mean, I was able to retain all of the knowledge that I learned blindly to help my brother that had yep. just recently graduated as well. So that way we can, when I, knock on wood, I have children okay. later on in life and all of that, I can utilize those resources and those learning experiences that I had so they don't make the same mistakes. And, you know, they, they talk about financial education with the younger students Mm -hmm. and they, they retain a lot of information, I believe by age seven. 
So we really want to push and we really like to encourage families, um, guardians, whatever it may be, to start pushing that as soon as possible because they're retaining their sponges, honestly. Yeah. And they retain all of that information, all the things we say and we do. They see it and they observe it, they retain it, and then they mimic it. Wow. So we really want to push that as soon as possible. Wow, I hope the students are, are really uh, listening to you right now because mm-hmm. um, even even when you had started talking about just loans, right, right. and and be be cognitive of the amount of loans you take out and what mm-hmm. that means, not only in the, in the now, but later. <laughs> Right, because right? Right. I'm gonna be paying back forever. So forever in a day, I know that's right. <laughs> so, so I, I, I truly understand. So, if you could talk a little bit about when we're talking about financial literacy as well, mm-hmm. like credit, right? Oh, like yeah. just, just the the whole idea of, of of just you know having a positive credit score. Right, credit is super important. We actually we participate with Youth Build. We have a partnership okay. um, in Rockford where we go in and talk to their students about you know important financial topics that they're gonna use like right now in life. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of those questions that pops up quite often is credit. And there are some students that that have a hard time understanding, well, why do we need credit? Like, Mm -hmm. what is that going to do for us? And they don't realize it's important. You got it. You're hopefully going to buy a home. Right. You know, future purchases like cars and things of that sort are vital for those kinds of things. So if you want to, I mean, everybody has their own path, but if Mm -hmm. if you're looking to do something of that sort, you got to start building that, learn about it, the importance of it, and, you know, utilize it later in life. It pays off. It really does. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so thank you for that. And um, you had mentioned, I think it was Bonsai. Yes. Bonsai. Um, And so is there any other um, like things that you that you do a Rock, a Rock Valley Credit Union does to, to help kids, you know, currently? Absolutely. Um, we have Green Path as well. Green okay. Path is a financial wellness um, kind of contact center, if mm-hmm. you will, in a sense. Um, so there, it's like a hotline where you can call, you can set up, I mean, a plan. They have people that are paid just to help out people with their financial, you know, building credit or saving up for, for a house, anything of that okay. sort. Like that. It's completely free. Bonsai we really like because, and we had just started, I believe, two years ago. It would have been around when I first started. Okay. Um, it's really interactive. You, They have calculators where you can actually put in your own financial hmm. information. Obviously, everything is private. Um, and it provides you with, like, mortgage payments. It provides you with, you know, you need to save up this much so that way, you know, you can have this by this amount of time with this yeah. rate and it kind of gives you estimates. So it's a real, real life situation and you put yourself in those exact shoes. So I think it's, it's helpful to have those numbers. Yeah. Um, or I mean, early on too, if you say, you know, I'm going to go on Zillow, I have a bad habit of doing that. Okay. And you know, Oh, I see this house and I'm not ready yet. Mm-hmm. But if I were to get there later on in life, this is the number, this is what I'm currently making, gotcha. you know, at a certain point, I should be making this amount of money so that way I can afford that house while still living within my means. Wow. So, so, so it's not just for, you know, for our high school students, this could benefit people like me, right? All ages of uh, life, really. You know, I don't have a credit score like Mr. Bloom, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, I appreciate that. So, so a um, little bit of fun, I like to kind of, you know, mess around a little bit here too. Mm-hmm. So if you can remember um, your favorite teacher at Belvedere. Oh, geez. So they may um, or may not pick up this podcast. That's hard. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think I would. I had a lot, okay. honestly. Okay. That's um, a good answer. A lot of those teachers were, were really awesome. Um, they were really helpful. I would have to say Kathy Jerby. She okay. was my journalism teacher throughout high school. Shout okay. out to Miss Jerby. All right. Um, she, she provided me with a lot of resources. She did a lot of things for us. Okay. Um, while in those classes and taking those courses, she took us to state. Mm-hmm. She took us to all these competitions for journalism and um, yearbook and stuff like that. And she's just she's a great person overall. So okay. she really she was kind of a role model in a sense because she she used to do things like that, like for um, I think she wrote for a DeKalb newspaper. Okay. And so she had that experience and integrated it into the classroom with like real life experiences. And this is the real stuff. You got to meet it by a certain deadline and reach right. all those goals and all that. So that kind of also fueled my fire for what I really enjoy doing. So, gotcha. And yeah. we, we all need awesome role models, and it, yep. and it sounds like she was, mm-hmm. she was really good. So That's I'm going to awesome. test you with this one because it, it seems like high school um, students don't remember this. Oh. Um, who was the principal when you were there? Oh, Todd Martins. Wow. Todd Martins. <laughs> just, just no hesitation. Just No hesitation. <laughs> I remember specifically because he was, uh, quite frankly, I think he was one of the coolest no tea, no shade. <laughs> but he was one of the coolest principals that we had there okay. because he had started my freshman year and then he left my senior year. So after 
we graduated. Okay. So it was like he came along with the ride, you know, on the ride with mm-hmm. us. Okay. So he was there freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year. He was very, he was very chill. He was very understanding with the kids. I just thought that he just, he just meshed very well with the students, oh, in man. my opinion. But, awesome. No, that, yeah. that's good. Give us something to, to uh, strive for right, as well. So right. that's, that's good. <laughs> so um, in closing, is there anything you would like to, you know, say to the audience that we didn't cover? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, so every April is Credit Union Youth Month. Okay. Um, youth Savings Month. So credit unions all over the country join together to um, really start um, children on that path to financial education. Um, so there's a theme every year. This year is um, Save Small, Dream Big. Okay. So it's really starting to push that financial education. We do coloring contests for the kids, and they can win gift cards. Mm-hmm. And we like to know, like, what are you going to do with that gift card? Are you going to save it? Are you going to spend it? What, uh, like, yeah. what is your plan to start <laughs> integrating that into their heads? Um, we have tips on our website, rackbellycreditunion.org forward slash youth month. Okay. Um, there are you know, tips to get the kids started. We did a, a youth savings month kind of video with kids from ages, I believe, four to six, seven, maybe eight. Okay. Just asking them, like, what's a budget? What's a credit union? What If I gave you $10, what would you do? Gotcha. You know, just kind of getting that kid's perspective and kids say the darnest things. Mm-hmm. It was, it's a riot. We have it on our socials, on our website as well. And it's, it's interesting to hear those kids talk um, just about money yeah. because then those, those are what they're seeing at home. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's interesting to get their different perspectives and, you know, what, what is dollar? What is, you know, where do they make those bills? Where do, where do those wow. bills come yeah. from and things like that? And they have very interesting answers. Okay. So you should check it out when you have a moment, I will. but I will absolutely. Yeah. But it's all month. Um, we push it year round, honestly. Okay. Um, but youth month in specific is a fun way for us to get families and parents and guardians and sisters, brothers, you name it, just everybody mm-hmm. involved in really pushing that financial education perspective. Okay. Well, thank you. And mm-hmm. um, thank you for being on. But before we let you go, it's yes. something that we try with with every guest. Let's see if you can make the ESPN <sighs> basket there. stretch or something here. <laughs> All right. I made this last on my trial run. So we'll see. Uh, uh, that was, was close, close, though. I'm going to go, one, close. More. You gotta go, I gotta more? go one more. Hey, there you go. It's the dedication here. <laughs> oh, no. That one you didn't did count. better the first time. You're just gonna, they can edit that out. That's, well, that's close enough. <laughs> hey, you that did works. it. Well, well, thanks for for being on, and um, you know, obviously, we'll we'll push you know you know everything, and, mm-hmm. and and hopefully, you get the participation that you need because um, financial literacy is is very important. Very true. I really believe that. Um, so, thank you again, everyone, for um, for joining us for this episode. Um, like you know, you have seen in the past, we like to bring you things where um, you can either learn something new, um, hopefully, or, or get some exciting news to um, from the Harlem School Harlem School District. So, thank you again. Thank you. Um, and like always, I am Harlem. You are Harlem. We are Harlem. See you next time.